Uh, congratulations on the premiere, the world premiere of A Bloody Mess, a short film that is directed by CCT. I'm, of course, one of the producers of the film, so I won't praise you on your performances. I'm not going to try to praise the film at all, simply because there would obviously be an inherent bias in what I say and do, but I do want to engage in dialogue with both of you, as both of you play Maria Crystal, you play Barsha, who is the main lead, and Annie, you play Arti, Barsha's mother, who is essentially a co-main lead as well. This is a part of our ancient Indian culture. There are many reasons why I asked you not mom. to do. It's ancient, not modern. The film is a lot about the two of you and your interactions with each other. I want to sort of take a step back and I want to talk to you about the audition process. Right. Because both of you had a different experience in the audition process and how the role was eventually given to you. So Annie, I'll start off with you because you played Arthi, who is a very traditional, very nice, but very traditional South Asian mother who can be easily misunderstood Not strawberries. by her teenage daughter and vice versa. Maria Crystal, you play Barsha, who is being misunderstood by her mother as well. So you guys are at odds because you want different things. But at the end of the day, both of you are inherently good people. So Annie, tell me a little bit about the audition process and how you landed the role of Arthi. Wow. Um, I actually, uh, I didn't know what, what type of character she was really at that point. I just. Um, delved in my own experiences in how I grew up in a very traditional sort of home and I had a sort of a vague idea because I was the role of Varsha in that place right I had the idea of what Varsha was going through with a mom who was very traditional in her outlook and so um, I was just myself and I think that was one of the things is just to be your true authentic self um, and to um, come prepared for the audition with the lines uh, ready and and deliver it the way that the director uh, wanted at the time. So I got that direction, which was good. So basically, I remember just sending in a short self tape, um, and then it went into the hands of one of the producers and the seesaw of the clip. Then I actually went into the in person audition, and it was interesting because I literally had no idea or think that I was ever going to land the role at all. Like it was completely out of my thoughts and just I had no clue and we I remember us redoing the scene more than once and I was like oh no I don't think this is gonna work out like what's gonna happen and um and the more we did it the more inspiring I felt the more energy I felt in the room just us going through that scene more than once and then I see safety just was like okay you guys land the role so it was a really interesting casting process for me because I've never I've never done something like that before so it was really cool to just step into a different atmosphere and just to kind of push the envelope a little bit more and I was really happy and excited to do something like this. I'm going to call you guys by your characters right now. Arthi aka Annie because you're Arthi for me first as opposed to Annie. Sorry guys. Uh, Arthi what was it like to get into the headspace? So you talked a little bit about reaching out into your own childhood and remembering how you were, uh, what Marcia's character ended up being, uh, played by Maria Crystal. What did, what did you tap into? What was your headspace like when you were getting the character briefing and you were going in for the blocking with the C's? Right. That was quite interesting um, because I actually had a difficulty to think in that traditional way. Um, it wasn't just delivery of lines, it was the tone that it was set in, and it was the um, facial expressions and the um, body posturing. And to get into that took quite a bit of time. Um, we spent quite a number of weeks, I, I would say we spent almost a week or 10 days going through scene by scene by emotion by emotion to get that exact feel because I'm actually not at all like my character on screen. And so it was really tough to play that very narrow minded mother role that was very strict and restrictive and, 
and at the same time come across as being loving. Like, you know, I like the scene where I'm wiping the floor and I'm looking up at my daughter and she's teasing me and I'm looking and I'm frustrated with her, but I, you can still see I love her, you know, and that's a really cool scene. Like, I laugh at that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I just want to tap into that a little bit because I think one of the scenes in the film, without giving away any spoilers at all, one of the scenes of the film, it's, it's almost a, a blink and you miss it type of scene. It's when uh, Varsha's brother comes up and says, hey, want to go? Because he has basketball, basketball practice. And you're like shooing him away. You're absolutely fine. You're very carefree with him. So it's interesting because as much as you're saying that your character is very strict, in that scene, you're not strict at all. In fact, you're yeah. waving him off, right? That was very typical um, that I grew up with where I had, uh, I was a female and I had a brother and we had different rules. Um, the rules that dictated for the girls were different than the rules for the boys. And, and that was just normal. And it continues to be normal in South Asian families that the boys are given a lot more leeway um, and the girls are asked to adhere to a much more stricter, more disciplined, more um, perhaps spiritual sort of upbringing. Um, and it's not like that for the boys often. And so um, I had a hard time because I come from a different school of thought where um, I don't see color, I don't see gender, I see everything as being equal. And so to play a role where I had to treat my daughter differently than I did my son, it was also playing a part. Mm. Maria Crystal, same question applies to you, but I think your circumstances would be very different because you are not South Asian. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that it's an interesting casting decision uh, made by the director and the assistant director where for a South Asian part, we basically a non-South Asian was cast. And uh, it can be slightly controversial in each community when somebody who is not from that community is cast. Uh, but obviously there is a reason why you were cast and there's a reason why you fit the bill. But how did you get into that headspace? Did you deal with this kind of stuff when you were growing up? Or was it completely foreign to you? What was your headspace and what did it take to get into the headspace of Varsha? Well, I was very fortunate and same thing with Annie, um, similar upbringing as well in terms of the fact that, you know, my parents and I were very open and when it comes to bodily functions and certain things right and and that that was something that was very grateful at home that I didn't have to hide away from but uh lots of workshops lots of studying I watched documentaries um you know online and just reading articles and really trying to study the the oppression in general I just the, the first thing that came to my mind was okay what it's like to not breathe you know that that sort of mm. feeling inside and that's what she felt like when she felt suffocated um, and also too, I think there are some little bit of, uh, experiences that I went through, not from home, but at work, uh, you're not allowed to talk about it when you're in, a, in the office, you know, you kind of keep it hush hush between your friends. So that was something that I drew that experience and brought it into this character, which made it a little bit more relatable to make it more of a believable performance. Hmm. And how did the two of you ended up, uh, how did the two of you end up bonding? Because Technically speaking, the two of you have to show a very complicated relationship. You have to show that the two of you deeply care about each other. I go back to the scene that Annie mentioned, which is where you are kind of teasing her uh, and she sort of lysols the entire place down. And uh, then it sort of heightens and the tension is increasing as time goes on. So how or what were you guys doing to increase the chemistry between the two of you and play this very complex relationship between the two of you. Annie, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, it was, uh, it's very important, I think, when we were um, doing our parts to remain in character. <clears throat> Even when we were doing the different scenes or doing multiple takes, to stay at that same emotional level uh, that is what true acting is about. That differentiates um, someone who's mediocre from someone who's good is because uh, we did this in two days and to do the range of locations and the range of scenes and the range of takes that we did, it ran like clockwork. 
Um, and every scene had a different emotional take to it. And so to uh, get into that character role, it meant that we had to block out everything else. There was no other thing that was to distract us, whether it was a phone, whether it was other conversations, whether whatever, whatever was going on somewhere else with scene set up. We had to remain focused in that moment, in the emotion of that moment. And that, um, it was not difficult on the set because we were given that space to do that. Um, I found that this was one of the nicest crews and um, environments to work in because not only did the director remain calm throughout the entire time, uh, she directed us in a way that enabled us to bring out the best in that character for that scene. Marie Crystal, what about you? I completely agree with what she said on that as well. Uh, also to, especially when we're doing the rehearsals, that really helped uh, just being able to bond more, see each other more. We even did like some Skype chats, you know, just trying to keep contact and that communication going to make it seem like, you know, we have a mother and daughter relationship to make it more believable. And also to a C safety was amazing in terms of just keeping her, her calm and, and directing us with so much focus and, and nuance. And she was so articulate and everything that it just made it much more easier, I guess, to focus and to bring that clarity to the performance that we really needed. So everything just worked out and everything fell into place so beautifully. So I was really grateful for that. I want to talk to you a little bit about, I believe it was a certain rehearsal that you had with Assis. And it was a situation where you were basically being asked to yell. <laughs> and it, it sort of drove you to tears, which is what she wanted. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, that was amazing. Actually, my voice like cracked after. Um, that was fantastic. I literally felt like I was in some sort of intense like workshop. She made me yell. She's like, I want you to feel anger. I want you to feel like you're being suffocated. You know, th th this is going on for too long. And I loved it. You know, I never felt so relieved and as if like I felt like I was actually doing something that really meant you know meant something real um and it was great i loved it and and even though we i sounded crazy but it worked and you needed that we needed i needed that actually to bring it out as much as possible so it was a great push really and it worked out in the end it was really <laughs> amazing to watch <laughs> annie i want to talk to you about uh an incident that you had as well uh during rehearsals where assis kept making you do a particular scene over and over again where you had to get the nuances right uh, when speaking to your husband who was played by Devon Chunarung right. uh, where you sort of uh, you sort of lash out at Maria Crystal and then you go jelly right him, right it's it's a very challenging uh, thing for an actor to do where you have literally just lashed out and then you do an about face and all of a sudden you are it's almost like your character's bipolar at that point and I don't mean bipolar, um, I'm, I'm saying that in a very casual way. I'm not saying it in a mental health way. It's, it's two very extreme ways to be and two very extreme ways for your character to behave. And I remember her, her doing that scene over and over with you in rehearsal. Tell me a little bit about that scene. Yeah, because you can imagine that when you are in the height of an emotion such as anger or pain or um, you're lashing out at someone, your emotion fills you and, and, and that's in that voice and in that character. And then in the next minute, you're talking to your husband and you don't want to have that anger carrying into that voice when you're speaking to your husband because you're not really angry at him. Plus, the female role in a husband-wife relationship is very different. And so if I spoke to him that way, it would be disrespectful. And because I, as Arthi in my character, tries to adhere to the requirements and, and the traditions of a traditional mother-wife role, it would have been out of character for me to speak to him in that disrespectful way. So to flip like that, um, that's the brilliance of Azizethi. That's really her brilliance because as a person, as an actress, I'm really just the canvas through which a director is able to speak their voice. And so for me, for her, for her, the ultimate goal would be to have someone who is malleable and she needs the people around her, her actors, to be able to take on the voice that she has scripted and has in her head for this character. And I think that her ability 
to articulate that and then to get us to do that is her brilliance. I want to talk to you, this is uh, my last question uh, to wrap things up. I want to talk to you a little bit about how you felt after the world premiere because it was a bit of a different situation uh, because of COVID-19, it was a digital um, yeah. release and uh, a lot of people are going to be able to see it at the various film festivals. I think that they're so, they will still be virtual for the next couple of months anyway, uh, given the restrictions on social gatherings. But what, what it, was it a bittersweet kind of moment because this is what you were, have been waiting for for so long, but you weren't, you weren't able to experience it with the cast and the crew? Uh, or was it a situation where you felt as though there's more eyeballs out there and now I can share this movie sort of worldwide and people don't have to travel to watch my film? What was the emotional quotient like for the two of you? So I'll answer first, I guess. <laughs> sure. uh, so uh, it was mixed. Um, one was that I missed out on the feeling of, I, I wanted to see my team. I wanted to see my family. Um, the, a bloody mess is, is uh, our, all of our babies, it feels like. And so I missed out on that rapport and that camaraderie that comes when you share this moment with the people that put it together. So that was missing for sure. The second part that was missing is um, this film is something that really has to be seen on a big screen because of the work that's gone in for the for the sound, um, the camera work that's been done, the quality of the uh, the screen pictures. It's a big screen type picture, and even though it is just eleven and a half minutes, that is destroyed when you're watching it on a small screen such as a laptop, and so you don't get that effect. You don't get the surround sound effect and and the impact of all of that the sound that was in there. So that was the second part. But the fact that I'd waited one year to give birth, it was almost like giving birth to a child. Um, it was amazing to be able to watch it. I was crying. There were parts where I was laughing. There were parts that I cried. Um, it was very emotional for me. Um, it was like this high. <laughs> and I felt like I wanted it to be a feature length film. <laughs> nice. What about you, Marie Crystal? Yeah, I would have just loved to share that whole experience with everyone. And I also miss the classic experience of being in the movie theater and just watching it on screen. You know, that's the, one of the main experiences of, of seeing that. And also, too, I would have loved to meet other people as well in the film festivals and love to see other films and meet other people and other connections. And, um, you know, that's the hype. That's the magic of, of filmmaking. That's the magic of why films get premiered is because of that. So um, hopefully in the future, we could could have the opportunity to see that and experience it but uh, who knows who knows what the future brings you never know there's always surprises <laughs> that's true on that note Annie and Maria Crystal thank you so much for joining me uh, it's been a pleasure working with both of you uh, it's been a pleasure interacting with both of you and I hope to see you guys in other projects as well and uh, for this interview experience to continue in some way shape or form even if it's not for a bloody mess it's uh, for another film another project please keep us posted thank, thank you. you so much for having us thank you thank thanks you thanks so much take care both of you bye, -bye. bye.